Welcome back everyone to my Let's Play of Final Fantasy 2 on the Wii Virtual Console. Last episode we started making our way through the passage to the Tower of Babel. Uh, we met some of the refugees from Ebelan and we almost made it out of the passage but we stopped because we have a cutscene coming up here. We're going to get a new party member and uh, she will be a final party member so. Although in the game it's a prince but we're going with princess here so. Got a new enemy here, the egg. Um, it can hatch into various different creatures. Uh, so, uh, you never know actually what's in it. You could kind of get a preview for what's in it uh, based on uh, what you can steal off of it. No one in our party can steal yet, but our new character we're about to get, Nell, uh, she can steal. So if you uh, steal something from the egg, uh, you can kind of tell me what might be in the egg based on what you uh, steal from it. So. Like for the Lamias, you can steal a harp, so if you end up with a charm harp, you know, oh, that egg has a Lamia in it. Hey, Rubicon, I was waiting for this day. Have I met you before? I am Eblin's Princess Nell. Eblin, what's that? Don't play fool with me. And this is the ninja. Right now, I have uh, her in the back row. She brings a whole bunch of stuff to the, the table. Uh, it's pretty fast. Uh, so she'll often be the first one going. Uh, but as a ninja, doesn't use uh, heavy armor. So defense is mainly based on avoidance. Uh, blast you. And indeed you're strong, but still no match for me. Come challenge me after you become strong enough. So mainly... Uh, uh, evasion is how uh, Nell is going to uh, avoid attacks, but evasion isn't all that good right now. Um, Nell is going to be under-leveled, uh, about like five or six levels below what everybody else is. Uh, so I'm going to keep Nell in the back row. We're also after Ubikin for his crystal. Why don't you stay out of this? He is one of the fiends of elements. Haven't you toasted enough of his power? You think I'm just a spoiled princess, eh? The royal family of Evelyn is trained as ninjas. I can take care of this myself, okay? Stop it. No more. I've had enough. Georgie's crying out there. Tell the Yang and even Sid. We lost them all. Hey, come on. And, uh, Georgie. Ubercrantz is the strongest of the four fiends, but we still have to recover the crystals. Can't keep this pretty girl crying. Why don't we work together on this? Considering the fact that he's wounded, he sure bluffs. Well, Lily? And Lily casts that Cure 2, even though her best spell right now is Cure 3, but maybe they didn't think he'd have that level by now. But Nell is back on her feet. And uh, we're going to go grab that treasure chest there. Uh, and then we're going to head up to the... Uh, staircase there. Now I'm taking it to the Tower of Babel, but before I go and explore the Tower of Babel, what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit uh, this cave uh, with the exit spell, and I'm going to go talk with Namingway back in uh, Eblin the Cave and rename Edge Nell. So, I did that. Now we have our Nell there. Uh, right now I have Nell equipped with the Boomerang and the Charm Claw. Now that will weaken uh, her, her attack power a lot. Because uh, the Charm Claw basically, all the claws basically give no uh, attack power. But they do exploit elemental or creature type weaknesses. And that'll basically do like double damage. And one of the interesting things about Nell is if uh, she has a boomerang weapon equipped, uh, as long as one of the weapons that she has equipped is a back row weapon, uh, both weapons will take on the property of the front row uh, weapon. So, uh, you can have uh, her with like a boomerang and a sword, and the sword won't take the negative penalties in the back row, uh, because of the boomerang. But right now, I prefer to have, uh, the boomerang and an element, and a, and a claw, because I can exploit elemental or creature type weaknesses, so. The best one right now is the charm claw, as you can see when we fought those, uh, uh, the, the black cat enemies there. We charmed one, and it used this uh, bluster spell to uh, take out another enemy. They're pretty susceptible to charm. Uh, if you're not, uh, if you don't have the charm claw for whatever reason, uh, those enemies. Remember, what you want to do is you want to uh, turn them into uh, pigs, because then that way, when you attack them, uh, they can't counter with that uh, bluster ability. 
because they're uh, they're pigs. So that's why I kind of kept those uh, those characters in there. So you got a balloon enemy here. These are actually uh, a type of enemy that can drop with the bomb summon the. Uh, extra summon that uh, Georgie can use, so it's a chance you can get them, that summons from from him, from these enemies I mean. Uh, the Charm Claws like I said, is pretty good right now also because uh, it allows us to deal with uh, the ogre type enemies and uh, uh, those mad ogres. I said in the last episode we got uh, the Drain Sphere from Mad Ogres. We actually got them from the Black Cat Lamias. Uh, but uh, the Mad Ogres had some uh, an elixir. But uh, the Charm Claw exploits the uh, giant type uh, enemy weakness. So uh, now will be able to do a lot of damage based on that uh, Charm Claw. So there's some annoying enemies. Uh, the Sorcerer in the back, uh, she can call enemies. Just like uh, the Marians, uh, who are called the puppets, but she can call a variety of enemies. And the Blademen in the front are really annoying because they counterattack stuff with uh, physical, a uh, physical attacks with the virus spell. So one thing you can do is you can uh, turn them into toads, and that will prevent them from casting that uh, virus spell uh, as a counter. So yeah, the priest is called a toad, and. Uh, now they're toads, so they can't uh, hit us with that virus. Well, they can try to, but being toads, they can only cast the toad spell. And they can't do that, so that's an easy way to deal with them. Turn them into toads. And hey, we got a cure staff. That's a bad staff, but an old staff. We would have got that in Mysidia, but we're not having Lily uh, use staves or staves. So the best one to get would be the, uh, the sorcerer's staff. That's an extremely rare drop. Let's head this way, grab this last little treasure chest here. And then we'll do head on up. So this tower is not, uh, while it looks the same as the Tower of Babel uh, in the Underworld, it's not going to be as large as the Tower of uh, Babel Underworld, so it's actually kind of quick. Uh, that's why this episode isn't too, too long. A lot, a lot of new enemies, though, so... We have uh, some older enemies, though. We got a whole bunch of them. Four Mad Ogres. If you remember how we dealt with them in uh, Eblin Castle, we cast the Size spell on them. That uh, turns them into real tiny things, so it reduces their defense and their offense. And then after that, they're pretty much just easy to take care of. So we just wait for the Size, and uh, Nell will do. She'll do a lot of damage with that Charm Claw. You'll see. That's one of the reasons why we have the Charm Claw uh, equipped. Even though the Charm Claw has a zero attack power, uh, it's going to do four times uh, the attack power of the Boomerang. So yeah, once these uh, Mad Ogres are shrunk, they're basically really, really easy. But they can't hit you very hard, and their defense goes down. They still have strong magical defense, uh, so you don't want to waste spells on these guys. But uh, physical defense goes down a lot. Take them out, and uh, we're about to get uh, from them the um, Ogre Axe. And uh, the Ogre Axe, we're going to give that to Roops. Uh, but Roops will re equip, we'll keep that Ice Sword Brand Sword though, because uh, when we fight the uh, Rupacante, the Fiend of Fire, uh, we're going to want to exploit the elemental weakness of uh, Rupacante, so we're going to have to have that uh, Ice Brand uh, available. But for right now, when we run into ogres and non-enemies uh, without an element of weakness, uh, the ogre axe is going to do uh, more damage, so that's why we're giving it to Roops here. Like I said, with the ogre axe, uh, Roops can pretty much now one-shot uh, ogres as well. We got two people who can take care of ogres, uh, Nell and Roops. Yeah. Nothing over there to uh, to the left. It's all in dead end. So we're gonna head over to the to the right. And we're gonna run into these enemies, and I've kept these ones in. Uh, uh, even though normally I cut uh, enemies when I see them before out, 
because I didn't get to show off the uh, sorcerer's stats. And the sorcerer can summon enemies just like the, like I said, uh, the Marion and the, uh, they summon the puppets and evil dolls. But the sorcerer can summon different things, and one of the things that uh, she can summon, which uh, interestingly enough she does uh, in this battle, is a kind of a rare encounter, these green dragons. Uh, they're uh, normally only found in this one spot, there's like the three, uh, three step peninsula, they call it. Uh, in the underworld, where there's some really rare encounters, uh, so we'll uh, we couldn't reach that earlier. We didn't need an airship to get to it, but uh, we'll uh, I'll eventually show that off that area off. Cause I got really really lucky in that uh, she manages to summon the green dragon here, so I don't have to worry about that uh, later on. Now the green dragon is kind of really tough. Uh, because the green dragon uses uh, a spell lightning, which hits everybody for lightning damage. And we don't have anything that really resists lightning right now. Uh, we, if we had diamond gear, that resists lightning. But right now, all the uh, elements that are only really absorbed or uh, we're, we're strong against are the fire and ice. So the lightning is going to do a lot of damage. So yeah, if we had like diamond rings, uh, we could equip them on Georgie, Lily, and Nell. Uh, diamond gauntlets or uh, a diamond helmet we could put on uh, Jarvis and Roops, and that would help them out, but we don't have that yet, so. But I guess normally you wouldn't, normally you wouldn't fight those enemies uh, until you have the airship on the underground, and by that point in time, you can uh, get the, the diamond gear, because there's another uh, dwarf village in the underground, and they sell the diamond type of equipment. That, the strongest lightning. So, but we ran into one before we had that, but it's okay, we managed to uh, take it out. So we heal ourselves up and continue on. Don't have too much uh, longer to go. That's where we're gonna end up eventually, over there in that little room with the two doors there. And we, got, we kinda go up the tower, then down the tower, and then back up. It's kinda windy, this uh, level. Just got a middle sword there. Uh, Nell started off with short swords, then there's middle swords, then there's long swords. Then we started getting some like named ninja type swords. Uh, the problem with the swords is, uh, in order to equip a sword, uh, or to really do the most damage with a sword, you're basically going to need to be in the front row with Nell. And Nell don't really have the uh, uh, hit points of the evasion right now to make that really work out. Now we could have give the uh, sword instead of the claw. But uh, the sword doesn't have any uh, like special properties or uh, elements that it can take advantage of. Not that a lot of enemies in this area have elements or weaknesses, but still better just right now to uh, have the claw uh, boomerang combo. Eventually, Nell will get stronger boomerangs as well. Uh, I usually like to keep Nell in the back row until the end, uh, the very end of the game. Uh, when the final two ninja swords are available. At that point, uh, Nell will have enough, you know, usually evasion and hit points to uh, kind of stay in the front row. Nell will mainly have about the same hit point total as uh, Lily. So, but have better evasion than Lily. So there's like that teleporter that uh, Rubicant must have used to get up here, but we couldn't use it to get up to here. And we can't use it to go back down to the Tower of Babel, uh, the Underworld. So, yes, we're just uh, stuck going forward here. But uh, we got a lot of stuff, um, big cutscene coming up, and also a big battle coming up. So I'm going to make a save right here, and uh, in preparation for that upcoming battle. So take care, have a good one. Hope to see you in the next episode where we uh, run into Rubicant. Take care. Bye.